Hi guys, this is Mrs. Gessler, and in this video we are going to talk about uniform circular motion. Uh, and to begin with, what is uniform circular motion? Um, I like to abbreviate it because I'm lazy. UCM, uniform circular motion, and so we're going to keep doing that. And I've got some things written down, so if you need to pause so you can keep up, um, please do. Uh, so what is uniform circular motion? Well, you can tell you've got something that is moving in uniform circular motion. At first, it's going in a circle. Goes in circles. But it's not just going in circles um, that makes it uniform circular motion. There's something special about its velocity. Um, first, the magnitude of the velocity has to be constant. Uh, so the, con the velocity that it, it is moving in a circle is constant, uh, and the direction of that velocity is constantly changing. <laughs> constantly changing, which is sort of a weird way to say that, right? It is constantly changing. It is constantly changing um, the direction of the velocity uh, to go in a circle. So we that's what it's doing, okay? Um, what makes it go in a circle? Well, um, we call that a, a centripetal force. Um, we abbreviate that usually FC. Um, sometimes we call it uh, the central force. You can call it a central force. Um, also, a variety of forces could supply the central force. It could be gravity. It could be tension. Um, it could be a normal force. It could be an electric force, a magnetic force. There's uh, all sorts of different types of forces out there that it could be, right? Um, I've got over here... Um, a circle. We'll talk about centripetal acceleration here in just a second. Um, the geometry we have here, here's our circle. Um, it's It's got, you know, a nice consistent radius, okay? There's the radius, okay? Uh, and that centripetal force, centri means center, and petal means seek, um, and we've done a lab about this. The way in which you have to push or pull on an object in order to get it to go in a circle is toward the center of the circle, okay? It, you have to push or pull toward the center of the circle, okay, in order to get it to go into a circle. So the force, if I were to draw that on here on my object, let's pick a, is this a different color? I think this is a different color. I can't tell that force would be directed inward like that. And as the object goes in a circle, that force would continue to point inward. So the direction of the force is also always changing. Uh, now the centripetal acceleration is also always changing. The centripetal acceleration is also center seeking. Seeking, okay. Um, it is a center, we, we, we label this AC, and sometimes we label it a R because it goes along the radius. They call it a radial acceleration as well because it goes along the radius. Okay, uh, the radial acceleration is what you have that causes the velocity to be constantly changing. Um, the the orientation here, so your velocity. If this is my velocity arrow, um, my acceleration arrow is always perpendicular, okay? Those are always perpendicular. Whoops, there's not two L's. Always perpendicular, okay? Always perpendicular, um, those two are, in order to get circular motion that is uniform, uniform circular motion. If those are not perpendicular, I'm not gonna have uniform circular motion. Um, if they're not perpendicular, um, some other interesting stuff happens that I don't think we're gonna see a whole lot in um, AP Physics 1. Uh, we definitely deal with it in AP Physics C. Uh, we end up having to split this acceleration into components that are that are perpendicular and parallel. And the parallel part causes the object to speed up or slow down, uh, and the perpendicular part is um, still going in a circle there. Okay, so we have the radial, and they call the other one tangential acceleration. Okay, um, there is that in the textbook, but I don't know. I don't know that you need to know that. I don't think that comes up. Okay. Uh, so uniform circular motion is all that we need to worry about here. Okay, so we have um, the always perpendicular acceleration, centripetal acceleration, and the velocity of the object. Okay, but the con the directions are always changing. Okay, so here we are with our our circle there. Now I've got another circle down here. <laughs> what about the centrifugal force? Okay, or centrifugal force, is uh, how people sometimes pronounce it. Okay. 
Um, those are, we'll call them fictitious, and then I'll point them out. Fictitious, I have no idea how to spell fictitious, fictitious. So let's, let's pretend that's how you spell fictitious, okay? You can let a, look it up and spell it correctly. Um, there, fictitious force, it has nothing to do, it does not, does not make things go in circles. Okay, so let's talk about where those forces are. Okay. Because there are some, there is something that would be what a, a centrifugal force is. So this one would be a center fleeing force. But objects don't really flee the center. They're, they're not really going out, okay? Um, if we had a, a string, so I've got a person inside a circle, okay? Um, if I had an object, and I'll draw it right here and you can add it wherever you'd like. So let's say I've got an object on a string, okay? And I'm whirling it around and I cut the string at some point in time. My object is not gonna go out, okay? That's not what it's gonna do, it's not gonna do that. Um, in, according to Newton's first law, an object in motion stays in motion. So right when it got here, what is the direction of that velocity? Well, it's it's parallel to the to the edge here. It's tangent to the edge of the circle. So the velocity is this way. That's actually the direction that the object is going to go. Okay. So if it's a vertical circle, it's going to go like it's a projectile now, right? It's going to fall this way. If it's a horizontal circle, it's just going to keep going this way indefinitely, uh, unless there's something else to make it do a, a different thing. Okay. So it's not going to just go outward. Okay. Uh, this centrifugal force is what people think of when they think, oh, well, it's just going to fly out. Okay. But that's, that's not going to happen because that force doesn't exist. Okay. So when people are thinking about this, here's what's probably going on. They're probably thinking, oh, well, I'm a person and I'm on the inside of a circle. And what I'm feeling is a force pushing me outward. Okay. And that's sort of not true at all. Okay. What are you feeling when you're on there? Okay, there's a there's a lovely um, amusement park ride, if you've ever been on one. Sometimes they call it the washing machine. Um, there's a, a barrel, a something, some kind of barrel, um, where you are in this circle, and they have you stand on the inside up against the wall. And as the ride gets going, they spin you faster and faster and faster, right? Okay, faster and faster. And then they drop the floor out from underneath you and you're left stuck up against the edge. And you feel pushed outward, you know, as if you're in a washing machine. But are you being pushed outward? Are you center fleeing? Is that really what's happening? And the answer is no, that's not what's happening, okay? What's happening is that you're being pushed inward and your body really wants to go outward. And so it's being continually pushed inward the whole time. So if we were to take this little guy here, okay, and let's draw a force diagram. Uh, and we're gonna take uh, the force diagram for all these things right here. So we've got a guy and he's standing on the edge, uh, whatever that is, okay. That's it's even kind of leaning like he has too, okay? So here's the guy, okay? What forces are on the guy? Well, there, there is a normal force pushing him inward, okay? This is the normal force from whatever this thing he is standing on, and that is providing that central force, okay? That's what the guy feels pushing him up. I don't know if there's gravity. Let's pretend this is in intergalactic space so that we don't have to worry about intergalactic space so that we don't have to uh, worry about gravity or anything else. And then there's this object here, and maybe it has a little tiny bit of gravity pulling it toward him, right? If it's not very massive, then it's going to be a really tiny arrow. In fact, it may not be big enough for me to even show. Um, so this object here, though, there's a, there's a Newton's third law, okay, right? Newton's third law says that when this thing pushes on the guy, the guy pushes back on the thing. And that force is directed outward, and it is in the opposite direction, uh, and it is the same amount. And um, I don't know what you want to call this force. It's not exactly a normal, but this guy is pushing on it, so maybe we'll call it F guy on the surface. Okay? Um, and that's going to be equal to this. This is definitely an outward force. It is a center fleeing sort of force, 
um, but it's not what's making anything go in a circle, okay? It, it's not making anything go in a circle. It's just a fictitious force. This, if anything is feeling an outward force, it is the object that is trying to make the thing go in a circle, okay? So there's no, there's no, there's no centrifugal force that is making something go in a circle. So this, this would be centrifugal, but it's not... making anything go in a circle. Okay, so that, that would be what I would identify as that. Okay, that's, that's not even on the guy. Okay, the guy's going in a circle. That's not on the guy. Something else, okay? So, so that's where a centrifugal force would be. Um, so let's talk about some other words. That, that would be the same thing here. So the, the washing machine thing is, is being pushed on by you, but it's not making anything go in a circle. So some other words here, when we're talking about things going in circles, there's the period, which is a capital T, um, and it is the time for one circle, okay? So if it takes you eight minutes to go around once, then your period is eight minutes. Um, if it takes you half a second, then your period is half a second. Um, period is the time for one circle, okay? One, we also call a circle a revolution, okay? We'll talk later about rotations in Unit 7, rotational motion, um, but revolutions is all we're doing right now. Uh, frequency is a curvy-looking F like this, um, and the frequency is the number of circles per second or per time interval, but we usually measure it in seconds. So the unit that we usually measure these in is the seconds for a period. Um, and we usually use um, uh, what's called a Hertz. Uh, you would spell that H-E-R-T-Z, like the rental company, uh, and abbreviate it Hertz. And it means one per second, okay? Um, so if you have five Hertz, then you're making five revolutions per second. If you're doing 0.7 Hertz, then it takes you less than a second, or, and you, it takes you more than a second to make a revolution, okay? So this is something about uniform circular motion. Oh, um, I forgot to say up here. Um, okay, so we were going to get into, um, no, I didn't forget to say, there's another page. Do, 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 do. Did I write on it? No, I didn't. So there Okay, so I'm going to actually put the next thing in the next video. So this is like uniform circular motion in general. So we're going to talk about some equations in the next video. Um, on how you calculate with uniform circular motion.